Okay, y'all. I'm going to try this again. <clears throat> Um, I'm not, I'm trying not to show my face. It's Sunday, September 24th. Um, this is hopefully going to be my second, uh, podcast. I might delete the first one because it, the sound wasn't that good in the beginning. And I'm going to, I'm just going to add on the sample that we did for the audio book because only nine people downloaded it. And probably three of them were me. We're using different accounts. Uh, it's going to be the last chapter of my book. And it's a, a personal, it's not a, a date. It's not a date story. It's a personal story about how I quit drinking. But um, the rest of them are all about uh, dates. Some of them when I was still drinking. And most of them when I quit drinking. Um, I think... Uh, I think the mission, the main mission here is fulfilling a message I got on my website from the weatherman at the uh, Vegas weatherman, Ted Florendo from CBS. He said, hey, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I think that was two Sundays ago. It might have been three Sundays ago. But now I've got this podcast in my second week, and I figured out some ways to use CapCut. Previously, I was using Audacity and uh, Buzzsprout and, man, some other stuff. I'm, I feel like I'm more high-tech than ever. But I'm trying to keep a little bit of privacy here because uh, I'm using a fake name. But uh, I published a book about some dates that were real. And... Uh, and I'm trying to promote it doing this uh, podcast. So one thing that would be wonderful is because I just prom- I just released the audio book was just approved on Friday. So I'm going to put the link for that audio book. That reminds me, I need to do that. I'm going to put the link. In, if you guys, it's like a bounty. If you're thinking about getting an Audible account, and you click on my uh, and you, my book is the reason you get the account. I get seventy five bucks for that. So uh, don't subscribe. Skip the subscription. Just get the uh, just get the Audible deal. Um, and that if you do that, I'll give you some a sign. It'd be like a fake name, but I'll give you something. I'll hook you up in Vegas or New Orleans or some something. I I will definitely return the favor. Uh, I got a burger, chicken wing rut place with daiquiris and, and on Bourbon Street, so you guys can come down. I'll feed everybody if you guys do the. Uh, I'll comp you a bunch of burgers and chicken and daiquiris for the weekend in New Orleans if you uh, do the Audible uh, bounty thing, and I get the seventy-five bucks for everybody that signs up for listening to my book. So I'll put the link in there too. Uh, I got to put the link on the website as well. I forgot about that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I was going to put a clip from another chapter, but since nobody listened to the first uh, podcast, I'm going to go ahead and put the same one on this one. I'm playing around with CapCut this time, so hopefully. And I got this new microphone from Nexapro to microphone and video, and that's why I'm I'm trying to hold it close to my mouth to see if it makes a difference in the sound because the last time I did it, it didn't sound good at all. But, um, oh yeah, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about doing with this project and I, I would love to, to bring, you know, to have a guest speaker, you know, so bring somebody on to ask some questions or some shit, or if anybody out there listening to this has some questions about the book, the book's 16 chapters, 15 dates, and each one of those women is very, very interesting, very complicated, complex uh, very smart, hella entrepreneur. And I have this image, vision in my head of, and I've already started doing it, hiring on Fiverr some young women to write about those characters enough to make some books and some audio books. But then I also want to take it to other types of entertainment like I'm fascinated with, I don't, I don't know, I'm not a fan. I'm just fascinated with why people are interested in anime and manga. But like, 
I think I can translate or or adapt, maybe adapt's the better word, the chapters in this book to comic books. And then I was even thinking maybe do some a music album where each each girl, each chapter has a song written about them enough to put on Spotify to monetize. So the monetization options with this thing is what I'm most interested about. And I guess that's what this podcast is going to explore the addiction, the dating and the business side of, of doing this. So uh, anyways, I think that's all I got to say. Uh, I'll, 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 I would love some questions on any of the podcast platforms and I'm going to try to promote this the best I can. And I appreciate all the listens. I appreciate the subscribing and, uh, and yeah, if you do an audible subscriber, if you buy, if you get an audible membership, you're going to have to send me some emails on the website and I will buy you, you know, at 75 bucks that I get. So I'll do 150 bucks worth of daiquiris and burgers and chicken, and, uh, on bourbon street. So, I'll just give it to you. I appreciate listening. I appreciate the uh, subscribing and uh, all the support and interest. So, peace. Chapter 16, Skittles and Starburst. With a handle in your hand, Steely Dan. September 30th, 2011 was the last night I had a drink, and it's part of the reason I keep claiming to be so damn lucky. Thank you for reading this far. You want to know how drunk I was? Three days before I quit drinking, I went to the emergency room because I hadn't taken a dump in five days. I flew from Vegas to NOLA for my goddaughter's birthday party, drank like a fish, smoked like a chimney, and ate a dozen po'boys that weekend. On the flight back, I sat near the restroom and ordered four or five vodkas while eating a whole bag of Starbursts plus a whole bag of Skittles. I got back to Vegas on Sunday night. By Thursday evening, I still hadn't taken a dump, and I started to get nervous. I had convinced myself that my constipation was the result of eating all those candies on the plane. I didn't know what else to attribute my lack of bowel movements to. I only imagined globs and globs of chewed up Skittles and Starbursts stuck in my butthole preventing me from taking a crap. When I got to the emergency room, the nurse handed me the clipboard to sign in. The first question asked why I was there, and it was embarrassing. I blanked. I think I put upset stomach on the line and filled out the rest as fast as I could before handing it back to the nurse. I sat back down in the empty waiting room, dying for relief, and expecting someone to come around the corner clowning me for the upset stomach. Since the place was mostly empty, the nurse called my name quick, opening the automatic double doors, welcoming me to the back. She took my temp, blood pressure, height, weight, and asked me all the usual initial questions, appearing sympathetic to my pain. By this point, I had ballooned up to 235 pounds, from the 195 when I got married four years before. I didn't initially blame the weight on drinking bottles of flavored vodka every night, but I should have. I should have known I had a bad problem when I kept pissing on myself, but I didn't. I'd already been roofied and rolled by the escorts by this time and didn't stop. When the doctor came to see me, he closed the door and introduced himself with a fist bump, which was cool with me. He asked what was wrong, and I told him I hadn't taken a dump in nearly a week and was worried. He looked confused, so I explained how the last dump I took was in the NOLA airport on Sunday. Then I grabbed the two for eight dollar special in the gift shop and ate a whole bag of Skittles, followed by a whole bag of Starbursts on the plane, and was wondering if that could be clogging me up. He started laughing at me, but tried not to make it too obvious when he realized I was being sincere. He jumped up to grab some gloves and asked me a few questions, taking back control of the conversation. Do you smoke cigarettes? Yes. How often? About half a pack a day, maybe a pack a day on the weekends. Do you drink? Yes. How often and how many? Every day. I own bars on the strip, probably four or five a day. How much water do you drink a day? Whenever the ice melts. Do you eat fruits and vegetables regularly? No. What did you have for lunch today? Bacon cheeseburger with cheese fries and extra mayo. 
when's the last time you had a salad? Uh, last week or two weeks. When's the last time you drank some water? Uh, he told me to roll on my side and pull my pants down while he stuck two fingers of his gloved hand in my ass before I said stop. He dug around a second or two and I was ready for him to stop, but I wanted to take a dump. He joked and said he couldn't find the starburst blocking me up and I should take a few days off the booze and drink only water. He also suggested I eat more vegetables and fruits and quit the cigarettes. I was constipated because I was dehydrated due to my lifestyle. Three days later, I jumped a Porsche Cayenne off the end of Las Vegas Boulevard because I thought I was getting on the interstate. I was accelerating, thinking I was on the on-ramp, but was actually driving south towards the end of the strip. The state trooper said all four tires had left the ground for 72 feet after I crashed through the barricade where Las Vegas Boulevard ends. The fucked up part was my buddy had gotten me a room at the M Resort for one of the many charity events our Daiquiri Bar co-sponsored. We gave enough money to get a table near the front, our logo on all the banners, and a suite so I didn't need to drive home. I always took advantage of these events, ate, and drank my ass off, because that's what they're meant for. I took it too far that night. I tried to kill myself, and failed. When I finally met with the state trooper to fill out the report, he gave my best friend the DVD with all the pictures he took the next morning. He said the scene reminded him of watching a Dukes of Hazard episode and planned to show his grandkids so they would never drink and drive. The End <laughs>